I will never more roam to my own little home and to pray far Sean Tracy was born in 1895 in Salahed Beg, County Tipperary. He was a farmer and in 1913 he joined the Irish Volunteer Force. In 1916 he tried to unite the East Limerick Brigade and the South Tipperary Brigade to join the Easter Rising. In 1919 he led the inciting incident for Ireland's War of Independence which was the Salahed Beg ambush. The ambush signalled a state of open war against the armed police and Tracy was on the run for the rest of his life. When police barracks were attacked and destroyed to break the British military control over the countryside, Tracy was prominently involved and in October 1920 he was tracked down and killed by the British Secret Service. On the first anniversary of Tracy's death, Dinny Lacey mustered thousands of comrades from the 3rd Tipperary Brigade to Tracy's graveside. This tradition continued every year and the Tipperary veterans formed a committee to commemorate not only Tracy but all fallen comrades. This committee is now run by the descendants of the veterans. On Tracy's 50th anniversary thousands attended including President Eamon de Valera, who met the surviving members of the brigade. On the 100th anniversary, in 2020, only a token commemoration could take place due to COVID-19 restrictions. The Tipperary hurling team was on the way to Croke Park to play in the All-Ireland Final of 1916. They stopped outside the GPO as their captain said a rosary to pray for those who had fought in the Easter Rising some months earlier. In 1922, the Tipperary team was playing in Croke Park once again, when on this occasion, they stopped at Talbot Street on the spot where Sean Tracy had been killed. Tipperary people have continued the tradition of commemorating Sean Tracy on All-Ireland Final Sunday up to the present day. We welcome all who attend Sarkid Me Le Folteroy from whatever county you come from. The struggle for independence was not inhibited by county boundaries as the Tipperary and Kilkenny brigades and many others fought side by side for a common purpose. Sean Tracy and his comrades were imbued with the spirit that drove the 1916 leaders to rebellion. They were familiar with the words of the proclamation which spelled out clearly their hopes and aspirations for Ireland. The 1916 proclamation of the Republic will now be read by Seamus Lahey. Seamus is a historian with close family connections with the struggle for independence. Seamus Lahey. Arja. In remembering the 1916 proclamation today, we are remembering also the Tipperary team who stopped at the GPO on their way to Croke Park to play and to beat Kid Kenny in the All-Ireland Final 
of 1916. The Tipperary team stood on the very spot from where Parik Pierce had read this proclamation only a few months before. The team captain led them in a decade of the rosary for the souls of the leaders of the rising and of the men and women who follow them. And then the Tipperary team continued on their walk to Cove Park as we do today. The proclamation of Pumlock the Hairden, the provisional government of the Irish Republic to the people of Ireland, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old traditions of nationhood. Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers, and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe. But relying first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted it, their right to national freedom. Six times during the past 600 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the word. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens. And it declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past until our arms have brought the opportunity moment, uh, the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all our men and women. The provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we not pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, 
Sean McDiarmid, P. H. Pierce, James Connolly, Thomas McDonough, Evan Kant, Joseph McDonough. I'm sorry, Joseph Plunkett. <laughs> The sun that set with its golden rays And the bitter fight was o'er Our brave boy sleeps beneath the clay On this earth they are no more The moon shone down the battlefield Where a dying rebel lay His body was stretched and his arms crossed as his life's blood flowed away. Our comrades in silent ambush lay, though the evening sky was clear. And not a man was there afraid, those brave boys knew no fear. Few people in the city streets had heard of the terrible fray of a gallant youth whose home was set in Tipperary far away. A comrade passing heard him moan as he wounded lay on the ground. A friend knew well he was one of his own as he warily looked around. Lift me gently, he whispered, no more on this earth will I stay. I will never more roam through my own native home and temporarily far away. I lock on my hair, I pray you take to the mother I love so dear. I implore you take it to her for my sake, and I know she'll think fondly of me. Tell her here in the battle for light at the dawn of bright freedom's day. I pray for my home in the thick of the fight and temporary far away. Soldiers of Ireland bore him high on their shoulders with solemn tread. And many the tear and mournful sigh swept over our patriot dead. In silence they lowered him into the clay, there to rest in the reckoning day. John Tracy died, his home to say. Speaker for today, former Ochtaran coming local Esquel, all the way from Cavan, Egon O'Farrell, for Falsha River. For real, Margaret Liam, of his authority, Link, of Wakas, the Sean of his own Kishtas, and Kurvet live. Not to delay anyone because I know you're all heading to a very important place, and it's important on a day like today, a special day for all Gales in Ireland, a Hornall Ireland Hurling Day, that you in Tipperary have over the years since 1922 have honoured the memory of Sean Tracy and all of his comrades. And I think that's something that all of you in Tipperary are to be commended for. Just very, very briefly, I mean, Sean Tracy was like you, a son of Tipperary, but sometimes behind the people that died in the struggle for independence for Ireland, 
We forget their circumstances. Sean was an only son. So he left behind a mother. He was, uh, they lived on 14 acres. Sean was due to be married 14 days after he died to May Quigley. May was so broken hearted that she left Ireland and went to Australia. So human tragedy is not simple. Uh, death on the streets is not something that affects the person who's dead, it affects many, many people. And of course on the day that Sean Tracy lay dead where we're standing, right here, uh, a lieutenant from the British Army, Gilbert Price, also lay dead. And so did a young 13 year old boy, Patrick Carroll, who just happened to be walking past at the same time. And also a shopkeeper, Patrick Cunningham, who was cycling past. Four people were dead in, in, in the horrific incident in the Times, all due to a denial of democracy, because that's the simple message that Sean Tracy stood for. Irish people, like all people, a majority should always be listened to. And there was a denial of democracy in those times. It was a very difficult period for everybody. Two nights before Sean Tracy was murdered here on the streets of Dublin, uh, he, had, he had stayed with a very good friend, of Professor John Carlin in St. Patrick's Training College. Many of you would know that fantastic institution that's still there educating young teachers. Carlin had given him refuge along with his friend Dan Breen. And when the British arrived to try to arrest the two men, they escaped. Tipperary men have a habit of escaping. Uh, the, Professor John Carlin was shot dead by the British military. And again, people like that should be remembered. He was simply giving shelter to people that he felt he wanted to, to give a bed to. And he ended up dead because of that. Indeed, Dan Breen ended up in a strange place after that escape from Fernside. Michael Collins asked the nuns at the Matter Hospital to look after him because he was injured. And the nuns put him in the maternity ward. <laughs> the first temporary man to go to labour. <laughs> And to remember that Sean Tracy and his comrades and the work members of the 3rd Tipperary Brigade of the Irish Republican Army. It was 100 years ago, 100 years ago this year, that that famous well-known incident that Salah had begged to a place, which was to become and sparked the fuse that became the Irish War of Independence. And uh, as I said, two days before he died, uh, Tracy escaped from Drumcondra. He was uh, yeah, staying yeah. with a friend of his, Philip Ryan, another temporary man yeah, yeah. in Shikor. And there was a meeting arranged of the squad. Collins had a squad and he added the temporary men to it. The meeting was taking place right here. I see it's now a, a wooden whisk. But in those days, they, they wore their names on their sleeves because proudly over that shop was the name Republican Outfitters. So if you were looking for a suit of clothes and you had a particular political view, you knew that that was the place to go. That shop was owned by a Clare man. His name was Father Clancy. And Father Clancy was to be shot dead one month after Tracy, also in Dublin. So these were difficult, difficult times. And at that meeting here in the Republican Outfitters, Tracy came to the meeting, but he was being followed by undercover agents. They recognised him, and Tracy decided he would escape once again, but unfortunately the bicycle that he tried to escape on, the pedal was broken. He fell, and he was shot dead, and along with the others that I've mentioned. And in, in, in a nice link with uh, in the past, I'm delighted to see that Con Hogan is here with us this morning, because Con Hogan's grandfather, Con Maloney deliver, delivered the graveside oration when Sean Tracy was buried in Kilfaken. So it's nice to see Con and that link with the past. Walter Road, Con, August Winter. <laughs> and so I just want to congratulate and thank the, the, the commemoration committee for remembering these difficult times. We're all, most of us, going to go to Crow Park. Indeed, one month after Tracy died, Collins and the men in Dublin knew that once Tracy was dead, that the intelligence system of the British Army was closing in fast, and that all Republicans were in danger. And of course, they then arranged what became the famous night uh, in November, just one month later, when 14 British agents were shot dead by the squad in Dublin. So the events of Tracy's death led to further events that eventually quickened the bringing of democracy to Ireland. And it was important that we commemorate and remember these people. Congratulations, Mabuyakas. We should also remember in conclusion that not only was Sean Tracy a GA man, a Gael, and a Republican soldier, but he was a committed member of the Gaelic League. 
agus hug she lawn jeel chunk don changa, do such she on gailge, iridamus fager, dolum she on gailge, agus vian gailge in usage ege, gorilta agus egoni, agus e nam a scree of she a anum, is in gailge a wan a scree of she e, sa lag and shin shan o trasic, agus is carta gus is core on gailge a corn keen comai, in honor, do yan o trasic, agus do wincher, nangail elik. And well done. And as you go to Pro Park, and I know you've been encouraged by, 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 uh, to, to, to go on a pilgrimage there, I have to wish you well and remain neutral. But may the best team win, and whatever colours you're wearing, I'm sure they'll be on top, and I know that everybody will, will win. I think in remembering Sean Tracy, though, as you go to Pro Park, let's not forget that a month after Tracy died, Mick Hogan, wearing the temporary jersey, was shot dead on the pitch at Crow Park. So these are poignant times for all of you, but especially you people from Tipperary and for all of us in Ireland who live in difficult times again. And let's hope that we don't again have a denial of democracy on this island, because a denial of democracy does lead to incidents like those that took place here. And the plaque proudly still is on the wall to remember Sean Tracy and all of those women and men who went through difficult times so that you and I can freely walk around the streets of Dublin today in a different and changed time. This is the 27th time that Tipperary have appeared in an All-Ireland final since Sean Tracy died. And every year since then, there has been a commemoration. So well done not only to you, but remember your fourth bar who went to party. Where am I having? Many, many thanks to you all for attending here and for keeping the flame alive and keeping that great tradition alive. We'll be heading off for Park of Crawkick. Tebradar and Abu. I want to send good wishes uh, to John Hassett, who on many occasions organised this celebration here, to Mick Maguire and Sean Barlow, who couldn't be with us, and to the many to us in Auron Vian. Thank you.